Hi, I'm Brandon Pierce, and today I want to talk to you about meditation, and really about demystifying meditation. Because I think often meditation is seen as a very religious or spiritual practice, and while it can be, I think at its core, meditation is just a, a mental focus exercise to help train you, train your mind to step away from, or to step back from your thoughts and from your emotions and the things going on in your body, and to be able to witness those and become more aware of uh, your own ability to, to choose how you respond to those things. And it can have a great effect in your life. There are people uh, now, you know, it's, it's been studied by, you know, hundreds of studies and science is showing that uh, meditation is very beneficial for the brain and also for the body and for the way that it relaxes you and helps, uh, helps with stress and helps with, um, you know, relationships. And many uh, uh, CEOs are now putting meditation practices in, in place in their business. And, um, I think it's a very helpful tool to become uh, better equipped to handle the daily uh, stresses of life and uh, also to just appreciate more what's, what's going on around me. So I know that when I've had a meditation practice, a consistent meditation practice, it's made a big difference uh, in my relaxation level and my ability to connect with people um, rather than just being driven by whatever is going on in my subconscious or in my body. So today I want to just go over some of the, the basics of meditation to give you an idea for, um, for how it can be done. And there is no right or wrong way, I believe, to, to do it. But um, you, know, you can practice and find out what works well for you. So first let's talk about posture. Uh, there's no correct way to uh, have a meditation posture. A lot of people like to sit cross-legged like I am. But you can also uh, you know, kick back. You can lean in a chair, sit in a chair. You can lay down. You can even uh, meditate while you're walking, um, or even while you're driving, but not with your eyes closed, preferably. Um, uh, there, there's really not any right or wrong way to be able to meditate. As I said, it's a mental exercise. Um, but certain postures you may find help you to better tune in to, uh, to what's, what's going on and to what you want to focus on. And um, so, or it may help with, with how you breathe and different things like that, which we'll talk about soon. So, just wanted to say, meditation posture, irrelevant. Next is your environment. Now, I'm sitting here in this beautiful Bali at my house in Bali with the jungle and the bird sounds, and uh, it's very beautiful. Uh, but most of the time, honestly, uh, I'm just meditating up in my office, and, uh, and that works too. Uh, there's, again, like with posture, there's no right or wrong uh, or better or worse location for meditation. You can meditate in the middle of a noisy, chaotic environment. And in fact, if you can, kudos to you because it shows you're, you know, you're practicing uh, in the more difficult places. I think if you choose a quiet spot with, with less distraction, uh, well, in some ways it can help you to, to become more aware of what's going on inside of you rather than what's going on around you. But both are important to be able to uh, let pass through your experience and, uh, and not be taken by them, but be able to witness them. Now let's talk about the practice of meditation itself. Now in meditation, as I mentioned, it's a mental focus exercise. So in meditation, you would usually choose a focus point. Now it could be your breath. So as you breathe in and breathe out, you will focus on the sensations of the air going in and out of your lungs and through your nose or your mouth. And when you notice a thought or notice yourself getting into a story or noticing a sound or getting distracted, you just bring your attention back to your breath. So that's one way many people like to do it. And there are so many ways to breathe. Um, you can you know, breathe quickly, slowly, deeply, shallow. You can breathe through your nose, through your mouth. You can hold your breath at different places at the top or the bottom. You can do consistently smooth, no pause in between inhale and exhale. You can do a, sh a long inhale and a quick exhale or vice versa. So many variations and you can practice and see which ones, uh, you know, how, how they affect you. But again, it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can play around. Now besides the breath, you could also choose to focus on you know, a word or a phrase that you repeat inside your mind um, or with your mouth <laughs> over and over again uh, and just bring your attention back to that. You know, in some, some religions they'll use a, a mantra or a set of scriptures or, uh, or a verse, I mean, uh, or a phrase, uh, I, or, or just some nonsense syllable even, or a sound, um, uh, just to, to bring yourself back to that. I personally, lately, have been uh, liking to use phrases in my own language uh, just things that I want, want to work on and bring more into my life. Like uh, lately I've been uh, repeating the phrase, I love my life. 
Uh, so as I'll, and there are a few ways to do this. Sometimes I'll just think, I love my life as I breathe in, and then I breathe out. I love my life. Or sometimes I'll take one word at a time and do I breathe in, love, breathe out. My, breathe in, life, breathe out. And repeat that over and over again. And I've, the reason I, that I like that is because it not only gives me something to focus on, but it also, uh, I, I just find the phrase itself, the, uh, you know, focusing on that intention of loving my life really does help me to, to love my life more and helps me to be more aware of, you know, the things that are going well that I want to remember. Uh, so I, I enjoy doing that, but I've tried so many different things too, and they all work for me, and I try them at different times. So you can find out what works for you by, by trying it out. Now, as you meditate and as you find yourself getting distracted and you start thinking about some experience in your past or worrying about something in your future and you, you, you notice, oh wait, I'm thinking about the past or I'm thinking about the future, uh, again, the point is to just bring it back to what you intended to focus on and let that, uh, and, and just try to keep your focus there. But there is a tendency, I think, as for me anyway, when I catch myself to think, ah, you know, I messed up, I did it wrong. But uh, actually, the act of catching yourself is, is where you succeed. Because the more that you can do that, the more that you can recognize that during your meditation practice, the more you'll be able to recognize it in your, your life, your daily life. And be able to not get so caught up in the situations that happen and have more control over how you choose to respond uh, to those situations. Now, one other method of meditation is a tool for emotional integration. So if you experience, you know, let's say, let's say you notice like a big wave of sadness just coming up as you meditate. It's, you know, maybe you were thinking about something in the past that, that, you know, you regret or that was sad. You know, rather than, in your meditation practice, rather than going into the story of what happened and how this was so traumatic and everything, to be able to let that go, or at least, you know, let it be there, but just focus more on the sensation in your body. So is the sadness like a, a ta sagging feeling in your heart? Is it a twisting? Just what does it feel like? And just focus on that without, you know, if, if you notice yourself getting into the stories, bring it back to the sensation in your body. And I found that doing that can be very powerful for, for transforming some of those emotions and, and moving through them in, in a way that feels, uh, feels liberating. Now, sometimes when you're meditating, there will be sounds in your environment. Uh, right now, there is some construction noise going on <laughs> nearby and some men shouting. So if I were meditating here, you know, I, I could just choose to go to a different spot where it's quieter. But uh, I can also just practice um, you know, having those sounds in my background and not, not letting them you know, irk me. Or if they irk me, uh, just being with that irkness and being okay with that and letting that be there, uh, but not choosing to you know, react. So uh, that's an example of how meditation can be uh, done in various circumstances and, and used as a daily practice in, in your life as well. I think one of the reasons that meditation is seen as uh, a, a spiritual practice is because when you, you know, most of the time uh, we're so caught up in our thoughts and our emotions that when you take a few moments and you really have a, the experience of stepping back from your thoughts and seeing that, wow, I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my emotions. I'm not my body. I don't have to be controlled by any of these things and I can choose. It's, it's a really empowering and really um, uh, moving experience and I, I could call that spiritual because it can have such an effect on, you know, your own sense of, of who you are, sense of identity and in how you relate to others. And you'll notice, or I notice, when I see other people, you know, then getting angry or caught up in their emotions, I can have more compassion for them because uh, I do the same thing and I notice, you know, how difficult it is for me sometimes to step, um, you know, to, to recognize what, you know, what mo emotions are going on with me and to choose how I respond to them. So it's not easy to, to do it, but um, it's something, it's part of the human experience and something we all uh, have to deal with. And uh, I think it, it shows me my humanity more fully and, and helps me uh, to appreciate that in others. Now, meditation does require some practice in order to really reap the benefits. You may find, you know, after doing it for a minute a day, uh, you know, it, that, that could really relax you, but as you do it more and more, you'll find that um, just like anything that you practice, it'll become easier and easier to put into practice in life. So if you do want to develop a habit of meditation, I, I actually recommend starting small. So maybe after you, you shower or brush your teeth, just sit for one minute and, and focus, choose your focus point and, 
and just practice bringing your attention back to it for, for one minute, set a timer. Uh, and then the next day, maybe, you know, after a while, choose, choose two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes and see, see how it feels and see how long you're able to hold your attention for it. You know, if you can't hold your attention for more than a few seconds at a time, that's okay. And I have days still where I will, you know, I'll, I'll be catching myself every few seconds with like, oh, there's another thought, there's another thought. Sometimes I'll go minutes lost in thought without, you know, realizing what I'm doing and then bring my attention back. Other times I'm able to focus and, and stay attentive for uh, long periods of time without, uh, without much distraction. So uh, it, it's just going to depend and it's a, it's a practice, as I said. So um, if you would like to develop a meditation practice, then I guess the only thing to do is to practice it <laughs> and, and to see and to note, notice and recognize the effects that it has uh, as you meditate and how uh, more relaxed or peaceful you feel. And then also throughout your daily life, how that experience feels. There are also several great apps out there that can help you learn to meditate. I think one is called Headspace, and it just has a series of meditations and some videos, and guided meditations. That's another great way I forgot to mention to, uh, to meditate. Is rather than just going inward and on your own thoughts, you can have a voice talking in your ear to remind you when to breathe or what to think about or to guide you on an experience. And that can be uh, a powerful way to meditate and helpful, especially as you get started. I've, I've used a lot of those in the past. Um, and, you know, there are also several great books on meditation, so many books. Uh, you know, I really enjoy, now this one is, is pretty deep, but uh, if you, uh, there's a book called The Presence Process by Michael Brown that I really appreciated. And it helped me to develop a practice of meditation morning and night. Um, the Untethered Soul is a good one that talks about the mind and the mental chatter that goes on and how to, how to view that. Um, and, you know, reading a book like The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle can help. Uh, understand kind of what's going on as you experience some of these uh, these states, different states of presence um, in meditation. So I hope you found this video helpful and if you're interested in meditating uh, I encourage you to give it a try because the benefits um, really have been profound for me and for so many people who have meditated. And meditation is very simple uh, but it's not easy and you'll find that as you get started that um, you know we we're very controlled by our thoughts and by our emotions and it, uh, it takes a lot of practice to learn to, to separate um, yourself from, from your emotions and your thoughts and the sensations in your body. So thanks for watching. Remember to live well and enjoy life now.